Recently, the German Chamber of Commerce and Industry in Vietnam has published the results of a survey about German businesses in Vietnam. The AHK Wound Business Outlook Survey AHK WBO, is implemented by a network of global German Chamber of Commerce and Industry with 140 offices in 92 countries. AHK WBO Global German Business Confidence Survey is an annual survey of the Association of the German Chambers of Commerce and Industry with the participation of German businesses abroad. In 2019, the survey was conducted online on a global scale from April 8th to April 31st, 2019. The results were studied in May 2019. The survey in Vietnam was conducted by the German Chamber of Commerce and Industry in Vietnam, GIC or AHK Vietnam, with the participation of German investors and enterprises in Vietnam from many different sectors and industries like industry, construction, service and trade. The survey shows that Vietnam continues to be an investment destination for German businesses with high expectations on positive economic development in the medium term. Hello and welcome to this edition of Sharing Vietnam on VTC Tenerife Channel. As you know, the AHK Wong Business Outlook 2019 has just been released, showing the confirmed belief of German enterprises in Vietnam as their ideal investment destination. So to gain further insights into the survey results, as well as the prospects for further cooperation between German and Vietnamese enterprises, let's consult Mr. Marco Vander. Chief Representative of German Industry and Commerce Vietnam, GIC. Hello, Mr. Vonder. Thank you for joining us today. We all know that 2018 witnessed many encouraging results of the Vietnamese economy. So could you please share some comments on those encouraging results? And is it the reason for investors, especially foreign investors, to come to Vietnam and make further investment in the Vietnamese market? So first of all, I also want to mention that uh, we are really happy about this positive uh, outcome from 2018. And uh, we really believe that uh, this is one argument uh, why more and more uh, foreign and also German companies are interested to invest in Vietnam. Uh, but I think this is not the only uh, reason. Yeah? So we have many other uh, aspects. So uh, besides Singapore, Vietnam has the lowest hurdles for the market entry for foreign companies. So you can come with 100% of your own capital and to set a Vietnamese company, you can uh, just come by yourself. So no need to have a business partner or a Vietnamese business partner or another foreign business partner. And I think all this helps. And uh, finally, I think also Vietnam's uh, situation regarding all the free trade agreements uh, is uh, very supportive right now. So Vietnam is uh, part of the ASEAN economic community, is part of TPP-11, and just uh, two countries from the whole Southeast Asian region have also negotiated and signed a free trade agreement with the European Union, and this are Singapore and Vietnam. And uh, so I think in this respect, uh, Vietnam is in a very good position. The FDI capital in Vietnam this year continues to grow. So uh, could you please um, give us more detailed information about the direct investment capital in Vietnam made by the German enterprises? I don't can uh, give you an exact number right now, but uh, what I can report you is uh, we see a lot of interest and also a lot of uh, foreign investments coming from German companies. Uh, we see right now a development we call it China plus one, so German companies invested in China 10 years, 15 or 20 years ago, that they are keeping their uh, activities in China, but uh, enlarge and explore a second investment opportunity in Asia, but outside of China. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think here the companies are looking to ASEAN, and inside ASEAN they compare mostly Thailand and Vietnam, mm -hmm. and uh, whoever needs uh, already developed local supply chain, all the companies, they go normally to Thailand, and for all the others, uh, Vietnam is the right target and the right next investment location. Uh, and especially for small and medium-sized companies from Germany. The HK Wong Business Outlook 2019 had just been released. So could you brief through some highlights of this survey? 
I think uh, for, for us, uh, one of the most uh, important uh, outcomes was that uh, the results for Vietnam, comparing with all the other countries in Southeast Asia, uh, were much better uh, than uh, all the indicators and the answers for the other countries in the region. So that makes us very positive and it shows that uh, basically all the German companies they are quite uh, satisfied uh, and happy and successful in Vietnam right now. Just despite some challenges from the technical side, all the hurdles regarding the customs, uh, technical hurdles like certification requirements and so on. Uh, for us, the, the very good message was that more than 50% of the companies already actively in Vietnam are thinking about how to enlarge their activities in the country and how to increase uh, their in current investment and uh, to see their own future in Vietnam. And I think this is a very good result. And uh, maybe the number, the total number is just 51, 55 percent. Mm -hmm. But comparing with other countries in the same region, it's really a very high uh, score. Twenty eighteen is considered a successful year for Vietnam's economy. This is reflected in the positive growth in the exchange GDP increased by seven point one percent or total FDI inflows to the market reached thirteen billion US dollars. Vietnam's total import and export turnover continues to reach a record of more than 465 billion US dollars, of which export value reaches 13 billion US dollars. The Vietnamese government expressed goodwill in supporting and creating favorable conditions for foreign investors and businesses. In addition, a series of free trade agreements that Vietnam has participated in recent years has pushed the international cooperation. If you think about the EU VN uh, FTA, when it will if it, when it enters into force, this will ameliorate German and Vietnamese trade relations a lot. Things will, go, will be better, will be easier, will be cheaper. So I think this will be a good sign for German-Vietnamese cooperation. If we look at um, the side of German enterprises investing more in Vietnam, I think this will come as well. Because uh, Vietnam is being on the table now in Vietnam. It hasn't been for a very long time. People were looking to China, but they switch. They start to switch, but as German companies are small and medium-sized, they take more time. They cannot invest in China or in Vietnam or in Malaysia or in Singapore all at the same time. But I think things are going to be better every year. In recent years, the cooperation between Vietnamese and German enterprises has also been strongly promoted. In addition to traditional cooperation such as manufacturing and education, other potential areas such as food and beverages also promise to bring high efficiency. Trước tiên là ban Ranh Phai, ban phòng đại diện tại Việt Nam thì còn khá là mới, mới có mặt tại Việt Nam từ đầu năm 2019 thôi. Thì cái kế hoạch của ban Ranh Phai là vì ban rất là nổi tiếng về việc sản xuất và xuất khẩu rượu vang. Thì bên mình đã có một vài doanh nghiệp hợp tác cái như là đó là những doanh nghiệp nhập khẩu và phân phối trực tiếp rượu của bên mình thì ở đây tại đặc biệt là tại Hà Nội thì mình đã hợp tác với lại doanh nghiệp là Schmidt Vinotec là họ là một trong những doanh nghiệp làm việc chính với mình triển vọng trong tương lai của chúng tôi tập trung phần lớn là vào các cái đối tượng là giới trẻ của người Việt Nam những người mà rất là năng động và rất là sẵn sàng là đón nhận những khẩu vị mới hương vị mới À, do vậy và trong tương lai thì uh, Smith Vinotech và Ryland Pha uh, sẽ có rất nhiều hoạt động uh, để đi um, quảng bá sản phẩm cũng như là uh, mang đến những cái hương vị mới cho cho uh, toàn bộ uh, người dân Việt Nam. I know that there are certain hurdles in the cooperation between German and Vietnamese enterprises regarding the legal framework or administrative procedures or access to information, etc. So how have uh, those challenges been addressed? 
Yeah, sure. I think uh, we are in close contact uh, also with the Vietnamese authorities uh, in charge uh, for some legal issues, in charge for some uh, other uh, framework uh, topics. I think uh, that we are facing some hurdles, some challenges. Of course, that you are really sensitive. All what you need is trust and you have to be confident also to the legal framework that uh, you can be sure and you have a solid basement and foundation for your investment. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe this is one of the reasons why uh, companies are really sensitive uh, when they get surprised about a new law, uh, upcoming law, uh, immediately. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they didn't calculate that, they are not prepared for that. And uh, this is, uh, or this are such kind of surprises what companies uh, never like. And uh, I think here we have in Vietnam also potential of improvement uh, that uh, maybe before we have some legal changes, uh, other legal issues, uh, maybe we can have a dialogue beforehand and not afterwards. That we will have the dialogue, that's clear. And uh, I think for all, for the government, for the companies, also for us intermediates, it's always better to have this dialogue beforehand mm -hmm. than afterwards. Mm -hmm. So better act than react. What are your recommendations for the government of Vietnam in order to promote the trade relations between Vietnamese and German enterprises? Of course, so I, I see and uh, I, I uh, acknowledge that a government like the Vietnamese government, they have to set the right framework mm -hmm. to make the country for all foreign investments attractive. And uh, this is also applicable for German investors mm -hmm. and for German investments, basically. For German investments, I would uh, also select uh, two very specific items. Mm -hmm. First is uh, to make the Vietnamese companies, your own Vietnamese companies, more stronger. Mm -hmm. Why? The reason is, when a German investment is coming, so we don't like to build a German island. So we don't like the model 100% import, proceeding, production in Vietnam and 100% re-export. Mm -hmm. So what we want to have is, we want to make deep roots in Vietnam in this really concrete regional location where we invested. And the second one is uh, to have a good environment regarding vocational training. Mm -hmm. Yeah, everybody who investing here and uh, want to set a modern production process need educated people, skilled people. And uh, they are not always coming from the university. It's not possible to build a car just with graduates from university. So last questions, what are your expectations about the prospect for further cooperation between Vietnamese and German enterprises in the coming time? I'm, I'm still uh, quite optimistic. I think uh, what we reached so far is, uh, is very successful, but I still see a big potential also for the future. Mm -hmm. Especially, and I come back to the small or medium-sized companies, so they need a very specialized support on one hand, mm -hmm. but if they are decided to go in cooperation or even to investment here in Vietnam, mm -hmm. then it's uh, really long-term, long-standing, and uh, very, very uh, successful. Mm -hmm. And I think, especially for German companies, I can recommend Vietnam as a very suitable uh, business and investment location. Um, thank you for joining us today. That's all we have for this episode of Sharing Vietnam today. If you have any question, please email sharingvietnam at netvietv.net. Thank you for watching. Goodbye and see you again.